Hey guys, Chris here. Tonight I'm in the Sierra Nevada camping out and I have a story from one of our viewers who in the late 70s was at a camp, a summer camp, up near Mammoth, California. And one weekend they went up to some high mountain lakes and they had a series of strange things happen to them that he figured out later what it possibly was. Really interesting. That's next. Okay, the sun is going down on me really fast, so I'm gonna get my lanterns going here. Got the double lanterns tonight. This one's, there we go. Put that right over here. And for tonight's beer, we have from the Belching Beaver Brewing Company, we have Must Be the Honey Blonde. It's an ale, Must Be the, must be the Honey Blonde Ale. <laughs> That is a really tasty beer. It does have a little bit of a honey taste to it. And I had one of those last night, so I've already pre-tested the beer, which is uh, not a bad idea. <laughs> when you buy six of them, you gotta test one of them at least before the, uh, before the show, so. All right, cheers. I'm hearing some frogs over my shoulder here. And crickets and birds or something, <laughs> something. Anyways, animals are making some sounds right now, which is kind of a good sign. So our story came to us from David. He's one of our viewers. And back in the 70s, when David was growing up, he grew up in the same era I did. He was he was born in the 60s, a few years after I was born. His family would send him to summer camp at Mammoth, California. It was called Voorhees Viking Camp is what it was called. And there he would spend the entire summer from Memorial Day to Labor Day. The entire summer. Most of the campers would come on Sunday night, stay for the week, and leave on Friday, which is kind of the normal routine. But there was about seven people who would stay the entire summer. And they would go right through the weekend and spend the whole entire summer. And what they liked to do on their weekend, because there were no scheduled things with the camp, is that they would go up to this series of lakes called the Sherwin Lakes, and then up above that was called Valentine Lake. They would go up there, spend Friday and Saturday night, come back, late morning, early afternoon, Sunday, and they would go fishing up there. Beautiful lakes up there, beautiful country, and it was kind of a series of small mountains, like a mountain, mountain, and then another mountain, and then this like cirque with this really long, beautiful Valentine Lake. And this is in the Inyo National Forest on the southeastern side of the Sierras, just south of me really, a couple hours. And the Inyo National Forest is 1.9 million acres on the east side of the Sierra. So this is east of Yosemite and north of Mount Whitney, which is the highest point in the lower 48 of the United States at 14,494 feet. And the word Inyo means dwelling place of the Great Spirit. Native American. That is a really interesting. So this particular weekend they decide to go up to the lakes and do some fishing. They leave on Friday and they go about a mile to the base of this mountain and work their way up some switchbacks and it levels out on the first mountain and that's where Little Sherwin Lake is. They go another mile to the base of the next mountain, a series of switchbacks zigzag and right up the mountain. It levels out again and that is where Big Sherwin is. Go past that, another mile, and now they're on the third mountain. They're working their way up the third mountain. About halfway up the third mountain, they noticed a large tree down across the trail. 
big pine tree, not a dead pine tree, just a big fresh pine tree. David told me, he said that pine tree was not there the week before. They walked up to the tree and right away they could smell this horrible stench. Just a really horrible, putrid, terrible smell in the air, somewhere right around the area. They didn't know what it was. They looked down at this tree. In the branches, there's two branches. Kind of in between these two branches, they see a deer. They look a little closer and they notice this deer is, looks like it's torn in half, just laying there in the branches. Like something had just torn it in two pieces. And they thought, this is really weird. And, and David was like 11 years old and he didn't really feel anything like you know, connecting all these pieces together like it was something all related. They walk around a little bit and they all noticed some very large footprints in the dirt. Large human-like footprints. And not like it was walking through the area, but like it was kind of busy working on something right there. And David told me he realized that later, kind of figured out some things about this, and that he realized that they had obviously walked up on something that was busy with this deer. And it just, just left, just moments before they got there, it, it seemed like. He also mentioned that the stench could not have been the deer because the deer was fresh, fresh killed, and it was still warm. So the boys didn't really piece it together and figure out what was going on. The adult that was with him didn't say anything about what he thought it was. And so they left. They continued on up the mountain, finally made it to Valentine Lake. They got there kind of late, so they, what they did was they set up their camp, and their camp was really a simple camp. They did not have tents. They just rolled out their sleeping bags on the ground, had their fishing poles next to them, and laid in their sleeping bags. They had some dinner, watched the stars, and they turned in for the night. And David said they were laying there in their sleeping bags, and that horrible smell came back. Really kind of creepy. They remembered it from earlier in the day, and it was the same exact smell. And they're smelling this, and they're getting a little concerned, because they don't know what it is, but they're, they're kids, so they think, oh, it must be something in the forest, just some kind of a weird smell in the forest. They didn't associate it with an animal, or worse. And just shortly after that, it's now totally dark out, And David hears a twig just snap and a little bit of movement in the forest just outside of their camp. Listens intently and then he hears it walking around their camp. Something walking around their camp and you can hear grass, twigs breaking, occasional branch. Not real loud, not crashing, not trying to be obvious, but definitely clear that there was something literally walking around their camp. And it would walk for a little ways, and then it would stop. And then it would walk some more, kind of reposition, and stop, almost like it was watching them. They're laying there in their sleeping bags, no tents, feeling very exposed, little concerned, not sure what it is, thinking it's an animal, bear or something, you know, they're kids, so they, they just, they don't right away think of all the possibilities, they don't really know all the possibilities. This went on all night long, just throughout the night, till before the sun came up, finally stopped. 
David gets up to go to the bathroom and he goes about 400 feet off into the forest to go to the bathroom. The adult said, Just make sure you go pretty far away from camp. He had a friend come with him, did his business, and he's wrapped it up and he's looking down and then he looks up at this tree. And up in the tree, laying over this large branch of this pine tree, he sees the other half of this deer, the lower half, the hindquarters of the deer hanging over this tree. It's about 10 feet up in this tree. And he's looking at it, looking straight up at it, thinking that's the exact deer we saw on the trail. That's just the other half of it. It's the same deer though. Oh my gosh. Looks down and he sees the same footprints now under this tree below this branch with the deer in it. Wow. <laughs> a lot of pieces to a puzzle are starting to come together here. Again, he's a kid. He doesn't really think it, it all means something greater than the sum of its parts, so to speak. Goes back to the camp. Everyone's up. Tells them what he saw. And they thought, wow, that's interesting. It kind of resolved, you know, whatever happened to the other part of that deer. Again, it looked like it was twisted in half. They fished all day long, did really well, had a good time, kind of forgot about everything. Caught some fish. I'm guessing up in Valentine Lake, there's a rainbow and or brookie, brook trout. Uh, those are fun mountain fish to catch. They caught some fish, cooked them that night, had a little trout dinner, campfire, watched the stars, enjoying time with each other, laughing, having fun, probably telling stories. <laughs> Again, they all turn in, getting their sleeping bags are laid out, just like the night before. And again, they smell that horrible stench again. The same exact thing. Again, not long after that, they hear something walking around in the forest. This time, David's a little more concerned. He's scared at this point. Like, what is that? Is that a mountain lion, a bear, a deer? Who knows? I mean, they don't know what it is. I mean, they saw this deer. They know there's deer up there. This happened for most of the night. Gets through the night, next morning, it's Sunday now. Everyone's packing up, just had breakfast, getting ready to hit the trail. David needs to go to the bathroom one more time, goes to the same exact spot where he went to the bathroom the morning before, does his business, and he looks up in the tree, and the deer is now gone. It's not there anymore. He looks down, he sees this footprints. He can't remember the exact pattern. Maybe there's more footprints. Whatever those footprints belong to, look like it took the deer down and left with it. Wow. Goes back to camp. Everyone's all ready, getting their packs on, cinching them down. He tells them what he sees. They're like, wow, really? Okay, it's gone now. Wow. This whole thing with the deer was a little crazy. They're all packed up. They head down the mountain. About halfway down the mountain, they stop to take a break. The adult says, don't tell anybody about what you'd seen up here, what you've heard up here, or what you even smelled up here. Don't tell anybody. He didn't explain it. He didn't say why. He just said, don't tell anybody. And they thought, okay, it's, we're, we're fine. It, 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 again, they didn't tie everything together. And David didn't tie it in together until later. It kind of came to him 
and he'll talk about it in the interview more but as he got older and he learned more about Bigfoot Sasquatch and what they do and what they're capable of it started to really make sense that what he experienced was most likely a Sasquatch encounter it just kind of played out with these clues over two and a half days David said he went back to this lake Valentine Lake this same route ten more times after that encounter he had never heard anything like that never smelled anything never saw anything felt comfortable he, he really loved it up there had great memories up there uh, he was happy to find my channel and to have a place to bring his story so thank you David appreciate the story and uh, it was a good one so I appreciate you guys watching I am going to be playing the interview right now of our conversation with David I, I read your story and uh, yeah it's quite a story with I, I I know you were pretty young at the time but uh, to have something walking around your tent like twice it looks like two nights now we were all in sleeping bags but I mean I uh, I do a lot of camping and I'm outdoors a lot a lot of fly fishing yeah. and usually bears they just come right into your camp so we, I knew it wasn't a bear. What, what was the difference between that and a bear? Because it, it sounded like it was walking around your tent, so it sounds like it was in your camp. Yeah, so we, uh, the only thing we had was, I mean, we, were, we just took sleeping bags up. We didn't even use tents. Um, oh, okay. Oh, you weren't even in tents. Oh, wow. So what, what yeah. did you hear at, at night when you were uh, heard something walking around on those two nights? Just like something heavy footed, it would stay on the outskirts of the camp, but in the trees, kind of sandy. And there you have like 30, 40 feet from the lake up, and then it was trees. It was whatever it was, was walking around the outskirts of the camp where we couldn't see it. I mean, I, we didn't have flashlights either, so. Yeah. So could you hear like brush like moving and, this, you know, stepping on sticks and things, you know, it, with it, the underbrush? Branches, I mean, it oh was all gosh. weird because on the way up there, because, um, like I said, my parents used to send us to a summer camp. Yeah, for little summer. I so. mean, they, they thought they were just getting rid of us, but we, we left to go. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure. Yeah. No, it's just a uh, great area down there. It's just salt yeah, and so, rye. I mean, it's down there, but it's, yeah. Yeah, so we, it's up in Mammoth, and we would go up to, it's called the Voorhees Viking Camp. We'd go up there, for, me and my brother would go up for the whole summer, which everybody else would go up. They would leave on Friday, and then another group would come up back up on Monday. Okay. Were you guys counselors? No, we were just uh, just kids. <laughs> okay, so you were just kind of enrolled in, in week after week for the whole summer then? Yeah, my, my parents just paid for us to stay up there for the whole summer. Got it. <laughs> so, yeah, because most kids would just come for a week. and Yeah, uh, so that's. Well, you guys have probably really got to know the area and really the new campers would come and then they, you guys would kind of give them all the, uh, up, you know, here's how it works, here's how the food works, here's how the, here's where the lake is, follow us. And I'm sure you yeah, had it all so dialed we, in. So. so we had basically from Friday when they left in the morning until uh, Monday morning or usually about Monday lunchtime when they would get there. So we had all weekend to do whatever. So we, like three or four of us usually hiked up to these lakes. And there was a uh, little Sherwin, big Sherwin, and then the one, the farthest one was Valentine Lake. Every weekend. I mean, I probably in the, from 77 until I think it was like 83 or 84. Wow. Um, we hiked up there 30, 35 times. Yeah, yeah. Oh, you guys really was, got to know the area. Yeah, it was a really uh, eight-mile hike about, and I guess, yeah. like I said, my uh, story that it would, you'd have to go up, you know, two big mountains and a small, like, waterfall. We went the weekend before, and there was no tree down in the, over the path. Reason there was a tree down, and when we were walking up to it, I mean, there was a bad smell, I mean, when we were walking up to it. So I don't know if whatever was going on, mm -hmm. we interrupted it. Like right in the vicinity where the down tree was? Yeah, there was actually a, right we got there. up to it. There was a, 
a half a deer, like something jammed a, ha a deer in between two of the branches and basically tore the back end off of it. What and did that was, look like? Because could you could you just see like the the blood and uh, in the organs and stuff? Because I mean, you're looking at literally half of a deer. Yeah, we uh, I, I've seen. Cause I live in Colorado, so we see deer hit here all the time. But uh, I mean, I was a little kid, and I'm looking at this one. What the heck? And it was still warm. Whatever it was, like I said, I don't know if he walked up on it while it was doing whatever it was doing. But yeah, there was uh, guts everywhere, and I mean, wow. the thing that got me is there was big footprints all over the place right around that tree. Now, when you say there was big footprints, what was, because when I think of a trail in the forest, I always think there's a dirt trail and then there's usually grass and pine needles off on the sides and then that's, you know, the trees. So was there t footprints in the path or was it around, uh, you know, can you describe that, what that looked like? It was uh, around, like it was, a, it was like, when, so when you're going, it was kind of weird how it was, when you're going up the path, it's like zigzags yeah. the mountain. It was a hard yeah. dirt. Once you got to the like the crest of the first mountain and the second mountain, it was like a little bit sandy. Yeah, they were like the big redwood trees. If you ever go to Mammoth, uh, the trees there, I mean, you can almost run up the tree because the bark's so thick. You can, you know, you have hand like where you can grab it. A week before that, the tree wasn't there, and then we, when we walked up to it, you know, we were just like, you know, what's going on here? <laughs> Mm -hmm. How big was this tree that was across the trail? Uh huh. Like I think how how round was it? It was a pretty much a full oh, size log. Just, you know. Well, it was like a twelve inch tree around. Uh, yeah. Um, okay, that's that's a good size tree though. I was just a kid. I really didn't know much about Bigfoot or any of that. Put like two and two together on it. Um, the weird thing yeah. is, back in the seventies and like the or early eighties, you would never see anybody up there. I mean, I, like I said, I've been up there probably 30, 35 times. And I think I've yeah. seen like two of the park rangers or whatever on horseback and one person camping in the whole time that we went there. I mean, nobody would ever go up there. Yeah, uh, I don't know why. It was beautiful. Were the footprints like just kind of like they were walking in circles and kind of working on something or were they in a line or what was going on with the footprints? Um, they were just like all around the tree, like where the deer okay. was. Um, they were like on the trail. So I don't know really what happened before we got there. Like I said, I, sure, I've never, of course. I've worked in sewer plants, uh, like my jobs, uh, and uh, I've been to dumps. I've never smelled anything like this. I mean, it was, it was bad. Yeah. Oh my so, gosh. It was probably yeah. right there somewhere. Like I, 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 I think we walked up on something and it heard us coming, so it took off and took whatever it could. Yeah. Um, not thinking anything of it, we all you know looked at it, said, "Now, we'll just talked about it a little bit." Uh, there was three minors and then one adult. Um, uh -huh. So we went up to the lake and um, we started. I don't know if this thing, whatever it was, followed us or what it was, but. We got up there. We put our seat and bags out. Uh, we were getting ready on that Friday to go fishing, and all of a sudden that smell was back, and we were like, you know, what, what's going on? What, what's the smell? Yeah. When you when you smelled the smell up at the camp, like you just described, was it evening, nighttime, daytime? What time was it? It was, I would say by the time we got there, it was probably four, four-ish. And you smelled because the smell at, around that time? Oh, yeah, we smelled it before that, probably another hour before we got to the lake. So we got up to the lake, we put our stuff out, we went and we started fishing, and then we started smelling it. We didn't hear anything at the time. Yeah. We just started smelling it. So that night we ate some of the fish that we caught, um, went to bed, and that's when we started smelling it again. And that's when we started hearing something like walking around. It was, it, it was weird because it would walk and it would stop. And then all of a sudden you would hear it like running, something running, and it would stop. Like it was trying to find a good vantage point to check out what was going on. <laughs> wow. We put our fire and stuff out, so we, like I said, we didn't have, we didn't have flashlights. Yeah, and then you're in your sleeping bags, and you're under the stars, it sounded like. And then and, did, uh, did the other kids hear this too? Yes, all of them uh, did. Okay. I mean, even both. Um, was it pretty so, scary then? I mean, it sounds scary. Sounds scary to me. 
Uh, I think one of the kids probably went to the bathroom in a sleeping bag. Okay. Yeah, so you guys are all pretty intently listening to this and pretty pretty anxious about the whole situation and did the counselor or did, did the adult say anything? He didn't tell us anything until we were leaving Sunday. So the weird thing is when we woke up Saturday morning, you know, you don't they always tell you don't go to the bathroom close to your camp. <laughs> so we would walk you know, 100 yards or whatever, 300 whatever 100 feet or whatever away. And so me and the one kid walked to go to the bathroom and we walked up to this tree and I looked down when I'm going to the bathroom. I'm like, what the, there's those footprints again. And the little kid, the other kid that was with me looked up, he said, look at that. And I look and there's half, that half a deer was about nine, nine, ten feet up in, into the tree. Wow. How yeah, was it around positioned the, in the tree? Well, I mean, what kind of tree, and then how was it positioned? Like, how was it draped? Or it was a redwood, like one of those big redwoods. Oh, okay. Hanging off of a branch, like something just threw it up there. Okay, so kind of this half a deer, yeah. so he's like over both sides of the branch. And... Yeah, and I mean, I like I said, I I ran into a lot of bears, and most of the time they don't. They're not going to walk around the perimeter of your camp. They're just going to come in. I mean, I've had them. Uh, basically scoop my cooler off the back of my truck and start eating in front yeah. of us. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they they're no they're not too concerned about concealment or anything. They're just trying to test no, you and I, see how much they can get even if you're right there. It's like, you know what, if we can just grab the cooler while you're sitting there, that's fine. But yeah. Well that's that's really interesting with the uh the deer in the tree. What half of the deer was in the uh the tree? That was the back part of it, like the two the back part, two okay. Things. Yeah, and I, I don't know. It, it it was just weird. The whole thing was just weird. We were, you know, like I said, we were little kids. We didn't even know what was going on. We didn't hear anything that day, or I don't think we really even smelled anything that day. And uh, went fishing all day, ate dinner, and then that night again, it started up again. We're walking around, we started smelling it again. Um, the next morning, we woke up, walked over to the tree. The deer was gone. Did you I notice don't. more tracks below the tree? Uh, yeah, there was more tracks. Uh, we went out to look, like me and one of the uh, the kids went out to look where we heard stuff walking around, but we it was like pine needles and branches. You can see the broken branches, but you couldn't see any footprints in there because the sure. pine needles were so thick. Yeah, yeah, and the underbrush is, yeah, it's hard to leave any tracks. Wow, that's that's really fascinating with the, the deer. So it came back and got I don't the think deer. it ever left. <laughs> yeah, it sounded it sounded like he, he well he came back to the tree, but yeah, he was probably waiting to see what kind of breakfast you guys are gonna have. Pancakes. Oh, shit. <laughs> that's that's crazy. So now you guys are wrapping it up and what did the uh the adult say to you guys about the situation before you left? So we were on our way. We cleaned up everything, you know, put our stuff together. We started walking down. We got almost to where that deer and the tree was, where the deer was, and that was still there uh, when we walked by. Uh, and he told us not to tell, you know, he basically said, don't tell anybody about anything you heard or if you've seen anything or the smell. He goes, just don't say nothing to anybody. And, you know, wow. I was just like, okay. I mean, he's an adult. And you're supposed to listen to him. Sure. And he didn't explain anything why or even I your parents. He, like, because he was about 40 years old, I think. His name was yeah. Dave Thompson. And he was like uh -huh. 40 years old. And I think he knew what was going on. Yeah. He just didn't want us to be scared or anything. So uh, I, I don't know. Yeah. And then probably draw a ridicule or attention to something that you're not even quite sure of, you know. Like yeah, we and, saw giant footprints, and we heard something walk around. I'm like, oh really? Was who was who was the guy you were with? What did he tell you? <laughs> did he tell you a scary story or something? But yeah, he probably just didn't want any uh, feedback from the parents that was negative, and who knows what, especially back in yeah. the seventies. That that was close to like the Fourth of July, so we probably went up there four or five more times before summer was over, and really? nothing. Wow. Uh, it, actually, the deer was gone, but, I mean, a mountain lion could have taken I don't know if mountain lion, if they like to kill their own or if they'll eat something that's already dead. 
a bear could have took it. I don't know. How big were these footprints, would you guess? Uh, I would say 16, 17 inches. They were, and they weren't shoes. You can They, they were footprints. I mean, you can tell they were uh, like bare feet. Yes, with the toes and everything. That's really very large, 16, 17 inches, that range. I don't think anybody's going to be running around up there in bare feet. <laughs> These footprints were like, all over. I mean, they were like some walking around her. Um, then you can see where, uh, you know, it, then it went the other, like the opposite way we were coming up. So, like, we're, he, we're I think it went was into the trees. Yes, yeah, so, like, I think we walked up on something that was going, the, something was dealing with the deer. <laughs> if you ever seen the video, it's the Mono Lake Bigfoot. Um, Mono Lake Bigfoot, no. I, I know where Mono Lake is. I mean, it's more down in the, the desert, Mono yeah. Lake. But, uh, look uh, it up. It's about okay. a guy and his friends that were there, and they captured something. They didn't know it for like 24 years. They captured something on, on their cameras? On their, he was The dad was videotaping the mom and the kids. Then he went over by these rocks, and uh, uh, he got something on his video, and the only way that the only reason they found out about it is because I don't know if it was one of his relatives or whatever was going through the videos and put it on and uh, seen it. Yeah, it was just a strange encounter. I mean, like I said, I didn't see anything. It was just yeah. noise and smell. No, no, and the footprints. But that, that's a lot, though. Um, that's what uh, most of these are. They'll hear a howl. They'll hear rocks. Um, they might see rocks, the footprints. But there's it's really tough to get a, a direct view of it during an encounter and i really haven't i mean i told a couple other people about it and they basically laughed at me i mean i've hiked all over this year in nevada's then i moved to colorado for two but i don't think that has anything to do with this <laughs> oh, okay yeah yeah i mean I don't know if you want to hear it. it happened in colorado yes and, and what happened so uh me and my, i had a buddy that moved out here from california and uh, we went fishing a lot. And one day morning we woke up and uh, we're like, hey, let's go, you know, to uh, Chiefman Reservoir. And uh, so we're like, yeah, let's go. So we start driving up. So to get up there, you have to go on Highway 67. It goes through Sedalia, up to Deckers, and then you go up to the reservoir. You have to turn on a dirt road. And once you get up towards the reservoir, you can either go left to the reservoir or you can stay to the right and it's just a bunch of dirt roads. And we're, you know, we're like, you know what, let's, let's go, uh, see if we can find another lake, uh, if you go fishing yeah. that instead of this one. So we were cruising along the dirt roads and we get down into this, uh, we find this trail. It's a single truck or car trail. It's all overgrown. You know, you get to have a four wheel drive. We're like, Hey, yeah. let's take that. So we, uh, we're got about two, two and a half miles into this and there's no way to back up. I mean, you, you're you going forward. There's nowhere to pull off. It's, I mean, it's, mm -hmm. it's tight. Uh, we're going along, and all of a sudden, a camper shell flies in front of us off the side of the road, off the side of, like, the mountain where the trees are, and right in front of us on the road, and we're like, I'm like, what the heck? I don't yeah. know even how it got up there. <laughs> yeah. It went flying in front of you? It was like, I don't know if it was pushed or what, but it landed in front of us on the road, and I'm sitting here looking at it going, what, you know, what in the heck? And I'm telling my buddy, hey, get out and help me move this thing so we can keep going. I thought maybe it was, like, it just fell, it was sitting up there, and it slid off, or he wouldn't get out of the truck. Um, it landed on its roof, so I started to push it, push it out of the way, and I, you know, got my truck and kept going, and I'm trying to talk to him, and he wasn't saying anything to me. He was acting, like, weird. So we find we get up to this other reservoir, uh, Wellington Reservoir, and we're fishing all day. And I can hear him over there talking to himself. And uh, I'm like, dude, are you talking to me? And he goes, no, no, I'm not talking to you. I'm all right. And, you know, he was just acting. He wasn't acting the way he was when I picked him up. So we go fishing all day. Wasn't that great? Uh, we decided we'll go back home. We didn't go the same way. We uh, went to the dirt road over to uh, 285. I get to my house, he got in his car and left. Usually this guy would call me, you know, two or three times a week to go fishing or just to talk. Didn't hear from him for like two months. 
out of the blue, he calls me up and says, hey, uh, can you come over and clean my carpets? He goes, I'm moving back to California. And I'm like, uh, okay. <laughs> so I go down to Colorado Springs. I go in, I clean his carpets, and I'm talking to him. And he goes, what do you think about what we've seen? And I'm like, I, I didn't even know what he was talking about. What are you talking about? He goes, what we've seen when we were driving. And I'm like, I haven't seen you in two months. I don't know what you're talking about. He goes, when we were going fishing, when that shell flew into the front of the, uh, in the middle of the road, he goes, what do you, do, what do you think about what we've seen? I said, I've seen a shell going to the road. He goes, you didn't see it? I said, no, I was paying attention to the, you know, I'm driving, paying attention to the shell. He goes, he said that he's seen something standing there about eight feet tall looking at us. I didn't see it because there was trees in the way. And I was looking at the shell. He said he was, this thing was looking at us. It looked at him. He said this thing turned and three steps it was gone. And I'm like, uh, what are you talking about? And he goes, that's why I'm moving. He goes, I haven't slept in two months. And I'm like, well, I didn't see anything, dude. I didn't smell anything. He goes, I said, you should have said something when we were there. I mean, I had a camera. Yeah, he basically moved out of Colorado back to California because of it. Wow. Because he... He's only been in the mountains, I mean, he used to go a lot into the mountains. He says he's only been in the mountains like three times enough to go snowboarding at a ski resort, so for camping, or I'm like, why do I miss everything? <laughs> <laughs> so, I well, no, you were right gone. there, but you were driving, and so, yeah, you got to focus on the driving, and, and it's a one-lane road, and then something flies in front of you, but he was the passenger, so you probably, was it on the passenger side window, like he just turned his head to the right? And yeah, he said when he looked up to see where it came from, there was something in between, like, two trees looking at him, or looking yeah. at us, and it looked at him. He said, then the yeah. thing just, three steps, it was gone. Okay, that was really good. Thank you guys for watching. If you guys like stories about the strange, unexplained, and things that go bump in the night, please like and subscribe. Also, if you have your own story, send it to Basecamp Chris. 2 at gmail.com I'll take a look at it be patient it takes me some time to get to them but I get to every story and every person and thanks again for watching I appreciate the comments and our community that we have here looking forward to a great summer coming up and a lot of things planned so we'll see you guys on the next one as always keep hiking <laughs>